Hello and welcome to this presentation entitled Making a Case for Numerical Approach to Solving Differential Equations. This far, you notice that we've looked at uh, different methods of solving first order differential equations, be it uh, separation of variables up to first order linear. And uh, those methods which we've been using, we can actually collectively call analytic methods of solving differential equations. And now we're turning to numerical methods. I think this is point where we should make a case for what we're turning to. The fact is, as introduction to this um, uh, topic of differential equations, we actually went back to it differential and integral uh, calculus where we considered uh, these, these type of problems which we looked at in our chapter for integration. And uh, we know that when we've got a problem like this, what we're actually supposed to do here we're supposed to determine a function which, whose derivative is cos of x. And in that case, what we did is we would then solve that problem by answering this question and saying the integral of cos of x is sine of x. And you must note that when you differentiate sine, you get actually f of x. In other words, in general, if you are given a function to integrate function of work which is involved here is simply searching for a function which i will denote here by capital letter f of x such that when you differentiate this function with respect to the independent variable x or t whatever the case may be you should get the function under the integral sign in other words the, the integral problem like this is simple says you are in the presence of a derivative you have to recover the function which differentiates to that so that's what we call analytic methods of solving this integral and the, on the other end if we had a similar problem where we to, to determine the integral of this function we would do exactly a similar approach to determine the function which differentiate to this solving this problem we would then use the method of substitution we say let u be equals to 2x and then we determine du dx which would be 2 and then not Note that when we change the variables, we are actually taking an integral which is in terms of x across to an integral in terms of u. So we have here an integral, I'll write it like this, integral in terms of x, and then we, we take it over to an integral in terms of u, which we then do by this process of substitution. And then once we are here, we then get uh, du equals to 2 dx. But in this case, we want to actually what we want to do, you want to have a we have now an expression to substitute u, which is 2, 2x, and then we need to have now an expression to substitute dx. In this case, we make it dx substitute the formula by dividing both sides by 2. Then we've got du over 2. So in this case here, this will be equivalent to saying du is equal to 2 dx. Now, since we want to substitute dx with an expression of u, then we divide both sides here by 2. Then you get that uh, du over 2 is equal to dx. So now that integral now will simply be written as um, integral of e power u, which is the 2x multiplied by du over 2, which then we can now filter out the constant half here and then have half e to the power u du. And then at that point, you can see that this is an immediate integral of an exponential function, which will simply be e to the power u multiplied by half, and then we add a constant. So at this point now, doing backward substitution, that's what explains why this integral is supposed to be like this. So again here, we are simply looking at an analytic method of solving this uh, integral problem now going further we actually in our introduction we actually not uh, say that when you're in the presence of such an integral we are actually in the presence of the integral equation it says uh, dy is equals to cos x now the, this cos x is a derivative of some certain unknown function y therefore making that a differential equation we say the differential equation is an equation in which appears a, a function and, a, and derivatives of an unknown function so in this case here we have a derivative of a unknown function y which is that then we've just shown how to do that. What we do immediately here, we solve this differential equation using direct integration, which is simply doing this integral. And the similar in this case, we'll be talking of a dy dx, which is equal to e to the power of 2x. And the y here again will be an unknown function. And we've just discussed how to arrive at that unknown function using the method of substitution. And then we should note that this, what we've done with these two problems, is not something which is always possible. Now, as I'm saying, we can have an expression like that of an integral, which we cannot solve by using direct integration. And that simply says again, that if we had now a differential equation of this nature, we can't use direct integration to, to solve this problem. The reason being, we cannot find the function 
let's say function f of x which when we differentiate with respect to its independent variable we get uh, e to the power of x squared even if you try to use your method of substitution they say you say let u be equals to x squared you'll see that you'll never be able to get to an answer to this integral and then that then having such an integral in a situation for example of a definite integral which means we will not be able to evaluate this integral because remember if we had this kind of a situation where we are integrating between x0 and x1 a function of x what would that mean we would simply search again for the function which can differentiate to that then let's say that function is capital letter f of x then we would evaluate that from x0 to x1 which simply lends us at a numerical value which would be f of x1 minus f at x0 which we call the value of that definite integral but we know that given a function like this we know definitely that such a function would have a, a graph of this nature and we know the meaning of this integral and that integrating over an interval like that from x0 to x0 seems simply talks to the integrating between this value and that which simply talks to determining the area between the horizontal axis and the curve of the function which we can represent this way but then which means if we've got this kind of a integral which you cannot actually determine um, its value using analytic methods which means then you must then have an alternative way of determining this area like this this is where in the area module we actually resorted to resorted to approximating that area using at least two possible approaches one of them which is considering the power series of a function like this which we know is an expression like this then if we want to approximate that integral we would then evaluate this integral for a certain number of terms here depending on what we are actually up to in this case what we do i would truncate that uh, power series let's say at the fourth term here then integrate that and you can see that what you're going to do here you're going to simply use the simplest method of integration which is simply power rule then likewise evaluate then you get an approximate value of that definite integral which is the area under the curve like it was shown and then the next alternative will be to use numerical methods of integration which by now you should be familiar with which are for example trapezium rule and the simpsons method which you can actually use the different versions of so in that case what i'm trying to convince you or remind you is that when it is not possible to do analytic integration then we can do numerical integration it's where maybe we will do this truncation of a power series or we do the numerical methods as we know them and then we'll be doing what we call numerical integration and in some books like i've mentioned before you'll find that when you are in the presence of a differential equation let's say dy dx equals to f of x you'll actually find that that could be accompanied with a command which says integrate the following differential equation so actually the process of solving a differential equation is it is a process of integration but now if now integration cannot be done analytically then again we're going to be uh, approach it numerically then i think that's far i've made a case for why we should actually turn to numerical methods of solving differential equations so in this case given a um, different equation of this nature like we can see this one is the one you have seen which we cannot you solve using the analytic method and this is a, a second example though we have this kind of situation that we cannot solve this um, this equation using analytic methods now is we cannot be able to find a function y which is a solution to this equation using arithmetic but one fact we cannot do we cannot dismiss the fact that such a function would have a graph which you can represent the function as y equal to f of x which we can depict this way and because of that we can then actually use a resort to available numerical methods to solve the differential equation and get a table of values for such function which you can then plot to sort of give an, an idea of what kind what kind of function or what kind of a graph that function is called and then that takes us actually to turning to available numerical methods which are used in this case and in this module we are going to look at the following numerical methods which are Euler's methods and I, I'm not going to advance the the what the formula for this method I'm going to later discuss with you to see how logically we arrive at the formula so that you can have some understanding of use when you are using those formula and the next method would be the improved Euler's method whose purpose is simply to sort of improve the, the let's say the 
accuracy of the earlier method and you will see that actually the ideas used here are ideas which are aimed at getting better approximation of the values of the function which is a solution to such a tinge equation which cannot be solved analytical and the thirdly we're going to look at what you call bring the kuta fourth order method we're going to understand later where this fourth order refers to in that case we'll do this method with the with, with, with the hope that they are actually going to educate in the ways of thinking in as far as numerical approaches to solving problems are concerned that is in the absence of analytic methods at that point i think i've got i've made a case for solving using numerical methods and I've actually introduced you to the fact that there are methods you're going to look at and then the next step for this um, presentation is actually to discuss the methods and then later look at examples. So at that point I would like to say thank you for listening. My name is Charles Waswan Msipa.